Hi everybody and welcome to Travelling with Russell and welcome to a new video and welcome to a dark evening here in Moscow. Now it's just gone 6 p.m. and it's pitch black where I am here so I thought I'd come out to the street lights. Now this video will be kind of interesting especially if you're a follower of the channel and you've been following me for maybe at least a year or so. Uh, this is a follow-up to a video that I made last year where my wife purchased a studio apartment and uh, at the time it was rented out. Uh, now, basically, a, a more than, or roughly a year later, we've actually done some remodeling. We're gonna take you for a walk inside, show you the differences. Obviously, if you watched the previous video, it makes a little bit of sense. You can obviously go back and watch that. I'll have a card for you to watch uh, that exist, uh, that older video, right? So if you already know about the, the, the studio apartment, this is gonna be kind of interesting to see what a typical one room or a studio apartment looks like in Moscow region. Now, of course, being that it's dark outside, I can't really give you the full tour of the place, but there is actually a beauty salon downstairs right here. There's actually a men's hairdresser, which I've been to twice now. Every time I come here, I go and use the men's hairdressers over there. And there's a school off in the distance. That's what that bright white looking building is right there. And this is what they consider a micro district here in Moscow and Moscow region. There's quite a lot of these spread all over Moscow and also in other cities of Russia too. But the way they like to do the micro districts here is build the apartment buildings. So these are nine story buildings, by the way, that we're looking at right here. The studio itself is actually on level nine, so it's top floor. I don't think that really is kind of a uh, big difference really, but uh, you get a little bit of views out the window. And very typically in most of the micro districts where they've got the apartment buildings, they've got a park for kids right here. And it's obviously a bit snowy right now, but there is, I think there's a couple of kids over there uh, hanging out. Now, it's, uh, it doesn't really matter day or night here. You're gonna get the kids coming and playing outside. Probably this person here, they've got all fairy lights on their apartment, which is very nice. But yeah, depending on the building, sometimes there's businesses in that lower ground floor and sometimes they're not. Now, where we are here, literally, there's just one or two. And then the nearest supermarket is this building right here. It's on the right-hand side of this building. So it's only three or four minute walk to a supermarket, which is very nice. Somebody's coming home from work, I imagine. But we're gonna head on upstairs and go and check out this studio. So the left-hand door here is actually the entrance to go into the apartment building. Uh, there is multiple entrances. Uh, which is very typical of most apartment buildings. Uh, there isn't just one common elevator and the whole building shares it. So now the one thing that's kind of neat, now I'm not very much a beer drinker. There's a beer shop literally next to the entrance of the building. Now, if anyone's seen my video about the world's biggest beer shop, this is kind of a suburban version of it, but it's basically a family run uh, business where they've got beer taps inside and take away beer and there's a couple of fridges in there with some snacks but here's the door to get on inside and we're going to head upstairs open now let's head on inside so very typical of most apartment buildings no matter where you are in russia they've got this double entry here and always a raggedy old piece of carpet now that's no uh downplay on the building or anything, but it's very normal here. So you can come inside the, from the cold to the warm. I do like these letter boxes. Although you don't really get a lot of mail in Russia. They have these nice colorful ones, <laughs> which is kind of interesting. Uh, they've actually got central heating in the whole building and, and in the apartments also. So when you come on inside now, you can already feel warm from being outside. And they've got the steps there. This is the one for the pram for the kids. And there's even a kind of little travelator here. So if you've got a wheelchair or a push chair, you can use this as well. I don't know how many people use that typically here, but you don't see them in too many buildings in Russia, but this one does have one. Now I'm gonna give you the full tour. So excuse me if you're not finding something that's great or amazing. So this building has one single elevator. Now most buildings, depending on where you live, will actually have two elevators. One will be kind of what they consider a service elevator, one will be a passenger one. But being that these are uh, smaller buildings, one elevator is more than enough. 
All right, level nine and off we go. Now, I thought I'd show myself here. I've got my jacket on, I've got my uh, beanie on today. It's a little bit cold outside and I've actually been in and out quite a few times of the apartment before now. So uh, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna get on inside. I'm gonna give you the grand tour and I'm also gonna give you some of my closing thoughts and let you know about the remodeling and what I think of this studio apartment once we get uh, inside, have a walk around. Level nine, here we are. Nice and fast. This is a brand new elevator, by the way, too. So now, as is very typical when you come to a Russian apartment building, they've got the electricity meters right here. There'll also be the, as you can see, their TV, internet, everything kind of cabled in. And there is, you see, three apartments on this side and three on this side. Okay, so we've reached the ninth level and we're gonna head on inside. Number 101. Now, this is actually the top floor as well. I've actually got the door ready ahead of time so we can walk on inside. I've also put the lights on. Now, of course, this is a studio apartment. So some people, depending on where you live in the world, they might call it a bed sit. But in Russia, they call it a studio apartment. Nice place to hang your jackets right there. This is the router for the Wi-Fi as well. Now, although it just needs an extra screw to get it on kind of on square there, but just walking on inside now, there has been some workers here in the last two days, so excuse the floor, but mat for your feet. And then there's a tray there for when it's snowy or rainy, you can put your, I guess, dirty shoes right there. That's always nice. Now, there is one more thing to do for the studio and it's to actually get this door uh, installed. Now we've actually replaced the door right here. So that's why you're gonna see the, the uh, styro for the foam right there and then the handle is missing. So we're actually in the process. That's the last thing to do before this is ready for renting out. So the door's actually hung, but you might just see that it doesn't close. So we've got somebody coming to do that for us. Actually, all of the uh, wood that's needed is right here hanging up. So here it is, everybody, the studio apartment. Now, again, it's a one room place. Very perfect for, I'm gonna say a student or a single guy, single girl, maybe somebody who recently moved out of somewhere or wants to move in somewhere alone. Now, if you've seen the previous video, you might notice it's a new sofa. So this is actually a sofa bed, so it slides out and then the back folds down and it creates a double bed, which is very nice. It's got a couple of pillows as well, so that's a bonus. This was right off a veto, which is kind of similar to Facebook Marketplace. And it was actually a really good deal too. So the other sofa is gone. Again, it does probably make a little bit of sense if you watched the previous video of the studio so you get an idea of the space. So looking back here at the kitchen, this is a new desk as well. It may look the same, but it's actually a new tabletop or countertop, the same chair. But uh, yeah, nice. You can actually have it as a kitchen table or you can use it as a desk. I think it'd be perfect as a desk. Nice and easy to put your phone on charge or your computer right there. And here's the kitchen, yes. After a couple of days of getting rid of the old one, here's the new kitchen. Now, although this is what they call a modular kitchen, basically all the individual pieces were bought separately uh, to fit the space. Now, this is the world's smallest two-door fridge. I think it is anyway. Now, the intention is that the space has been left for a full size fridge and the actual exact width here from right to left is exactly the space to put a nice uh, tall fridge here. Kind of what they consider a slimline fridge. It's 54 centimeters wide. I mean, how did I know that? But in the last week, we've been kind of uh, uh, living, sleeping, dreaming about these uh, remodeling kind of thing. So yeah, some overhead cupboards right here. These are kind of nice. Obviously there's only basically a bottle of water in them, but these nice cupboards here. So there's plenty of storage for the kitchen. Now this is a new uh, two burner electric uh, hot plate. They call them hobs here, but it's a hot plate really. Uh, we decided to get a new kettle, which is nice I think for the person that's gonna move in. And then there's some drawers right here. Now, these would be handy to put all the knives and forks and spoons and whatever. 
and there's a couple of bottom shelves or cupboards right here. Now the fridge actually is a, is it this side? Oh, it's this side, oops. So yeah, the fridge right there is basically just a miniaturized version of a normal fridge. Now the keys are all set up here for the tenant. And these are the hinges and door uh, accessories to get the door fixed. Uh, there's somebody coming literally to come and do that and that's all the wood that's piled up here. So yeah, what do you think so far? Studio apartment. Again, I'm gonna say it's not suited to probably a couple. It's really more for a single person or a student or someone moving out of home for the first time or the last time, I don't know. Plenty of plug sockets as well, by the way. And on the wall here, uh, there's a possibility of putting a TV mounted up on the wall. That's the antenna socket for the TV. And then there uh, would be normally a TV cabinet here. And then this is the kind of wardrobe rail. There was an older version here. Again, if you've seen the old video, you may recognize that this has changed. It's a little bit bigger. And you can actually put some stuff on the bottom right here. And there is a mirror that needs hanging, but we've been advised about getting different uh, kind of attachments to hang it from because although it's not very heavy, it uh, needs to have different hooks. So we're in the process of getting that you can see out the window here now, it's a little bit later in the evening now, so it's dark outside. There is also a net curtain that needs putting up. Now between Jen and I, we uh, don't have a ladder, so <laughs> short of getting on each other's back to do it. Uh, we're gonna give it a try, but I don't know if we can get it up or not, but here's the view out the window. And of course it's across to another apartment building. Not a problem at all, but and then where you see the cars just here, that's the walk to the bus stop to get you to the nearest metro station, which is about 16 minutes away. Now I know that because I did the trip twice in the last week. And downstairs there's some more shops over here. It's a bit hard to see out the window now, but yeah, there we go. Now the reason why there's stuff here is the new tenant has already brought some bags to move in effectively tomorrow. So. He's already signed the contract. He's uh, more than happy to move in. He actually came a couple of days ago when this was all over the place. Um, but he kind of, on the proviso that it was gonna get finished, of course it was. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think, everybody. This is, uh, it's took a little bit of a while to get to this point. I know the old video now, is it more than six months old since we did that first video when my wife literally bought this place? There is also a vent up here, which if there was a range hood, it would vent to this range hood, but with it being just a basic uh, electric uh, cooktop, it didn't need a range hood. You could put one in, but it's not overly necessary. Uh, I just want to show the bathroom quickly. Again, just excuse this door. This is a new door, but we just need to get the hardware put on it and then get this door jam adjusted. And here it is. So yeah, I don't think everybody kind of needs to see the toilet, but there it is everybody. And there's a washing machine here as well. This is actually a new washing machine also. And a heated towel rail, which is a must in winter in Russia. It's actually very, very hot. Uh, yeah, and it's a bath and shower, which is nice. That basically just hangs off the hook over there and the shower curtain. And although maybe most people aren't overly excited, that is a new light as well. So yeah, everything's uh, in place. It's not a very big space, but completely fine for one person. I mean, I don't think you're gonna have two people in a bathroom at the same time. Light off for the bathroom now, but yeah, overall, we're very pleased now. The reason why I'm filming this a little bit later in the evening is I'm waiting for this guy to come to install these door jams and get the door handle on and then we can walk away knowing that tomorrow the new tenant can move right on in. So we're very, very happy. Okay, everybody, I wanna thank you for watching this walk around and tour of this one room or studio apartment here. Now I like to call it an apartment. Some people call it a flat. Uh, do you call it a flat where you live? Let me know in the comments. Do you call it an apartment? Uh, do you call it a, a, a bed sit? This is very interesting, these different words in different countries, right? So uh, please let me know in the comments what you think. 
Uh, now, if you're curious about the numbers, now, of course, if you've watched the old video, you might already know. So this was purchased by my wife for 3 million rubles. Now, I'm going to put a little card up on the screen so you can get an idea of the difference in the exchange rate. I hope it's, uh, it's kind of helpful just to reference the price. Now, of course, it's very hard to put a comparable price on it depending on where you live in the world. Obviously, I'm from Australia. Maybe you're from America, England, Germany, Canada. I'm not sure a lot of other countries watch the channel. So, of course, maybe just give me a bit of an idea of what you think of the price. Now, the guy who's moving in, now, of course, uh, if I just swing around here, there's a few bags right here. Now, it's been rented to him for 20,000 rubles per month. Now, again, I'll put the card up so you can get an idea of the price of the rent. Now, the rent uh, is basically a per month amount, paid monthly, of course. And there's also the plus water and electricity. Now, roughly for this kind of place, the water and electricity per month is about a thousand rubles, which is uh, kind of very reasonable. Uh, it's, the water and electricity here is off a meter. So it can be a little bit cheaper, a little bit higher, depending on water and electricity usage. Obviously, being a small place, you're not going to have very high usage unless you're really just, I don't know, just running the shower all day long. So uh, what do I think now? Personally, uh, now, of course, I was here when my wife bought this. So I saw how it was in that condition. Uh, I saw it a couple about a week ago when it was uh, when the last tenant moved out. And this is a thousand times better than what it was uh, a week ago. And obviously when we originally bought it, obviously the older furniture, this nice comfy sofa that I'm on now, the new kitchen, the new bathroom door, the new desk, everything has basically been refreshed. Uh, and I really like how it's come out. Now, again, as a rental uh, and uh, for one person now, it wouldn't suit a couple. It wouldn't suit a couple with children. Uh, because there's just not really the space. You, know, you pull out this bed, get yourself a TV right here. You can sit and watch TV from the sofa. Or you can just lay the bed out permanently and just get a blanket and a few big pillows and you'd be good to go. Uh, I think as a rental, it's perfect. Uh, it's uh, good value for money, whoever would live in this. Obviously, you can find places that are more expensive than this uh, with more rooms. Uh, you can find things at places a little bit cheaper. Uh, not necessarily any smaller than this, but maybe not as, uh, the, maybe the kitchen's not as finished off like this is now. Uh, you know, in different condition, maybe some older furniture. So yeah, I think for the price, it's very reasonable. Um, what my wife originally paid last year, I think uh, it's done well. Now, if I compare, I'm just going to switch hands here, because I'm just going to talk a, a few seconds longer. Now, if I compare to other uh, apartments in this building that are now for sale, or for rent, the price has gone up, you know, in, even in a year, uh, which is very good. Uh, the rental prices haven't really changed. Uh, there is a ton of apartments in Moscow, Moscow region. I mean, I'm going to say thousands and thousands. So it's really that convenience of how close you might want to live to the nearest bus stop to catch a bus somewhere or how close you are to the metro. That seems to be a big factor in Moscow, how close you are to public transport. Uh, of course, you saw some cars downstairs, so you may have your own car, so it's not really an issue driving somewhere. Um, but literally, if you go to the bus stop here, 15 minutes, give or take, uh, and you're at the metro station, which will take you all over Moscow. Uh, so it's nice and convenient. There's shops nearby. There's a school. I mean, of course, if you did or didn't have kids, uh, there is a lot of kids uh, around this area in the last few days that I've been here. Uh, kids everywhere. It's very normal in these micro districts, especially the fact that the schools are walking distance from the uh, apartments. Uh, a lot of shops nearby. There is a shopping center about seven, eight minutes down the street, which has got a very nice Perry Cross Dock, which if you watch the channel, I've done a few videos on different Perry Cross Docks. You can have a look at that video too, if you like. So yeah, thanks everybody. Uh, maybe this ending's a little bit longer. Uh, please post some comments, let me you know what you think of a typical studio apartment uh, here in Russia. Now, this building could be anywhere in uh, Russia, in other cities. Uh, it could be here in Moscow in another region. And the price could be higher, uh, not necessarily lower. You're not going to really get much lower in price than what this is. Uh, Rental-wise, again, it's about a, a kind of a on-par price for rent 
if I was to rent this somewhere else in Moscow region, obviously closer to Moscow center, the price will can go up as much as double for this same one room place. So yeah, thanks for watching. <laughs> There's a little bit of a long one by the end now. Give it a thumbs up if you like the video. There is another one for you to watch right here. You can watch that right afterwards. Uh, if you haven't watched the video already on the previous uh, walk around of this apartment, maybe watch that video if you want to. Thanks for being a subscriber to the channel. Thanks for being faithful uh, to traveling with Russell with me. And thanks for watching other videos. I really appreciate it. I've not done too much in the last few weeks, but this apartment uh, remodeling has taken up a lot of time. Uh, and it's, it's very, if anyone's done remodeling before, you'll know how painstaking it can be. So thanks everybody. And I'll see you in another video. Bye.